Good morning and welcome. Uh, we are very pleased to serve as your judges for this uh, We the People Invitational. Uh, as Carol said, we are going to uh, introduce ourselves and you introduce yourselves and uh, the star of this show who is your teacher. And then we'll give you the question. Look forward to a wonderful conversation with you. My name is Tom Tinder and I'm an attorney from Charleston, West Virginia. Good morning, my name is Emmanuel Caudillo, I'm a senior advisor with the White House Hispanic Prosperity Initiative in Washington, DC. And good morning, I'm Jen Patti Howell. I am the co-executive director of Virginia Civics, the home of the Virginia We the People program. Hi, my name is Channing McGuffey. Hi, my name is Omari Bryant. Hi, my name is Coral Colosimo, and we are from Bumpus Middle School. And your teacher is? Our teacher is Ms. Hall, and we are covering Unit 3. Great. Uh, today, we're going to do question one in unit three, and let me read that question to you. In the Virginia plan, James Madison proposed proportional representation in both houses of Congress. The delegates rejected Madison's proposal in favor of the Great Compromise. What is the Great Compromise, and how was it justified? Do you think the founders' justification is acceptable today? Why or why not? What are the advantages and disadvantages of equal representation in the Senate? And what are the advantages and disadvantages of changing the Senate to proportional representation? You may begin. The Great Compromise solves the problem of representation by distribution of power by having proportional representation. The Great Compromise was created so that larger states wouldn't be too powerful by having more representation than the smaller states. The Great Compromise was designed to distribute equal power for both states. Congress was divided into two, the Senate and the House of Representatives. The House has the power to develop all the bills dealing with taxes and government spending, while the Senate has the power to accept or reject bills related to taxes, as well as making changes to the bills involving taxes. Even though Congress was divided into two, the Great Compromise ensured that there was equal representation so that one side of Congress wasn't more powerful than the other. For example, the smaller states got equal representation in the House of the Senate and the larger states received proportional representation in the House. The Great Compromise resulted into the Senate having two senators from each state, whether it was small or large. For the House of Representatives, the Supreme Court ruled one person, one vote, meaning that each house should be proportionate to the population. Therefore, the Great Compromise was a good solution for representation by distributing power among the states to make sure that each state was represented equally. The founders justification was acceptable today. This is because the, of the results seen out of it. The results were how it affected us and how we've been able to operate with it today with little problem. The Constitutional Convention was a convention held in Philadelphia from May to September in 1787 to address the problems of a weak national government that existed under the Articles of Confederation. All the state representatives came together to address the problem, but came up with two main compromises, the New Jersey Plan and the Virginia Plan. Both were about different representations in Congress. The New Jersey Plan wanted equal representation while the Virginia plan wanted it based off population. With these two compromises, the men in the convention couldn't agree on one, so they came up with the Connecticut plan or the Great Compromise. This was an agreement to have two parts of Congress, one favoring the New Jersey plan and one favoring the Virginia plan. Some of the reasons as the convention was representation in Congress strong versus weak national government, slave trade, and bill of rights, powers of the president, electoral college, and slaves founding a population. 
Some of the reasons the family's justification is, accept is acceptable today is because of the effect that it gave us now. The justification allowed us to keep a good national government with no big problems. Also, it satisfied both plans into one by having two houses, which makes both sides happy. Therefore, the founders' justification was acceptable today. Some of the advantages to having the Senate to proportional representation is that the smaller states don't have as much say as larger states. Some of the disadvantages are that larger states have more say. The equal representation allowed smaller states to agree on the compromise and pass it. For example, California has 53 representatives representatives in the house and Wyoming has one, but the Senate, but in the Senate, they both have two. So the great compromise equaled the playing field for smaller states. Thank you very much. Um, we now have some questions for you and let me ask the first question. Um, you talked about the New Jersey plan and the Virginia plan. Uh, and we have uh, the great compromise, which has both the house and the Senate. But we have one state, the state of Nebraska, that has what's called a unicameral legislature, which means it just has one body, one house. Uh, why do you think that other states did not follow Nebraska and have just a unicameral legislation, just one house, instead of uh, what the great compromise was of having a house and a Senate? Because with just having one house, there's more likely of a chance of power not being distributed equally. And there's not, there's not gonna be really a distribu distribution of power, which meaning one house, they're gonna have all the power, which means more room for corruption. I'll go with the next question here. Uh, next question is, uh, should we change the Constitution to make representation in the Senate based on population? Why or why not? Um, I don't think that <laughs> um, I don't think that it should change because with the Great Compromise, it equaled out every state. And if there was not that and there was no equal ratio, then people would be outvoted and it wouldn't be fair for everyone. All right, so I have a question. What advantages or disadvantages does equal representation in the Senate give to your state specifically? It allows us to have a fair say in Senate and it allows like everyone to be able to do everything where we have equal votes and no one is able to overpower another state. Some disadvantages are for like bigger states where they don't have as much power based off the number of people that they have in their state. Today, uh we have two main political parties uh, in the United States and, and in our states. Um, do you think that we should have more major political parties, uh, three or four or five? Uh, why or why not? I think we should just to have more of different points of view for our government. Um, although we are a very successful country um, and we are a very diverse country, there's nothing wrong with having a little bit of a, more of a different perspective for other people and more representation for others. Uh, 
I got one another question. I want to expand on, on what's been said. Um, there's been this opposition against proportional government, especially in the Senate, because you know the the smaller states won't have much say. Can you expand on that? What does that mean? Um, does it mean that you know if, if for instance a, a small populous state like Wyoming or Vermont were to say, hey, you know we need something for our state, does it mean that you know you know, Texas or California or Florida would just go, oh, we don't care about what Wyoming or Vermont think. Um, so I'm interested to, to hear uh, on your opinion, what does that mean? Like not having much say, what does that mean to you or, or when, when you uh, make mention in, in your argument? I'm sorry, sir, could you repeat that? I'm working the volume. Oh, no worries, no worries. And so in your, in your question, you mentioned about uh, the opposition to proportional government in the Senate because the smaller states won't have much say. And so my question to you is, what does that mean? What is that they don't have much say? Is there is, um, what does that mean to you? Well, not having much say means not getting your point across or your opinion across and when you aren't able to do that you're not able to give different perspectives or points of view so it's more close-minded if the larger states had all the power um it's not really beneficial to the country because there's not more representation for the smaller states who could bring in good ideas or different perspectives to help benefit the country and the economy. All right, so our constitution starts with the words, we the people, right? Not we the states. So, why is it important to have representation based on being a state versus just, just having a, a, a body based on the people? Well, the states help represent what the people are trying to communicate. How do they do that? Can you explain, can you expand on that a little bit? And anyone? Um, I think what Coral is trying to say is that, or what I'm adding on to what Coral is saying is that, I think it is better that there are representatives because there are so many people that one representative has, it's more organized and when something's more organized, it's you can get your point across clearer. And what Coral was saying earlier, it benefits the country better. Also going off of what uh, Channing was saying, just like referring back to what our opening statement said, the Supreme Court ruled uh, one person, one vote, meaning that each house should be proportionate to the population. So, considering that there are such big populations, it's better to have um, the states represent the people and what their votes are or what their opinions are, considering That's fine. considering <laughs> that there are like many people and just having just being able to get your point across so that way it can help benefit. Great. All right, good job. We have now have some comments uh, for you. Um, I first of all, just uh, wanna tell you that I thought you did a, a very good job as it related to uh, uh, answering uh, the particular points in, the, uh, in, the op in your opening remarks. And then uh, we started out, and, and I particularly want to mention that this is a, uh, I, I as an attorney very much appreciate you mentioning that Supreme Court decision about one person, one vote, because uh, 
that's the first time we've had it uh, mentioned today. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, hopefully some of you uh, will grow up and become lawyers. Um, we need more good lawyers. Um, in your responses uh, to our questions, I, I do want to, to emphasize one point, and that is that uh, there are no right answers and there are no wrong answers. Uh, our questions are, are given to you so that you will just give us your opinion because that's what we want and you have the knowledge and you've done the research so that consequently uh, you can respond to that. So it's not that we're looking for a particular answer or that there's something that's right or wrong. It's what is your opinion and can you back up your opinion with facts and information and so forth. So don't hesitate you know, to, to tell us uh, what you know uh, because uh, we just want to uh, 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 understand and have a better understanding of what uh, of what you do know. Uh, overall, I thought you did a, a fine job. Um, I want to uh, commend you all for your participation in this um, uh, We the People program. And and please uh, make sure that you uh, continue to uh, to be the good citizens uh, that you are. Uh, and be active and involved in your school and in your community and your state. Uh, congratulations to you. Thank you very much. Good luck. I want to say, uh, I commend you on a good presentation here this morning. I thoroughly uh, enjoyed how it was organized and how each each member of the, of the panel uh, had their specific uh, parts and, and were able to share uh, share each that complemented each other. So I appreciate that and I thank you so much there. Um, just as a way just to enhance um, enhance your presentation, I know in regards to uh, the question that I was asking um, about the opportunity for states to, uh, smaller states to give their opinions, to give their perspectives. Um, but also one thing is, is the vote, because in the end, in the, in the Congress, they vote for their bills to pass. And so I think if you can add that to there, the importance of it, it's a harder uphill battle for smaller states to get their bills to support either their uh, state or their, or their state's uh, interest. Um, pass. I think that would be that would just enhance it a little bit more. To say that's why we need that equal representation in the Senate. If not, you know, this just gets ignored there. And so it's that it's that vote in in, in the bills. And so, but that's just to enhance your presentation. So next, as you're continuing your research in this, or, or especially in something like again in a future competition, you know, it's like, hey, it's because of this. Um, but other than that, I thoroughly enjoyed your presentation, and I, and I commend you to continue doing this. Continue, um, you know, the civic education is incredibly important, and, and you're doing it right now. And so I commend you on that, and, and good job. Thank you. Yeah, I, I agree with, with my colleagues. I, I really enjoyed our conversation today. And, you know, I, what I really appreciated in your opening statement was that you talked about representation in terms of distribution of power. And I think that that's a really important concept to, to wrap your head around. You know, we get a, we hear a lot of people talk about, you know, it's, it's about representation, about representation, representing the voice of the people. You guys got right to it. It's about power and who, who has power in our government. And I just, I really liked that you, that you framed it in, in those terms. I think, you know, during the, the Q and A portion, the follow-up portion, you guys have studied this way more recently than we have, I guarantee it. So, you know, for tomorrow, just be a little bit more confident in your answers. I, I think that, you know, you've, you've got something to say. I know you've got, you've, you've done all of the studying and, and I just, I want you to have the, the confidence to be able to, to tell us that because we don't fight. But um, I really enjoyed our conversation and I'm excited to keep it going tomorrow. Thank you guys.